Okay, thank you. We're going to get started making a week of broadcast here today. Still dealing with prophecy, and we're in, uh, this is lesson 106 on the rapture. We'll go ahead and get the radio started and fired up today. And good to have everybody with us and on board today uh, for the uh, gospel voice today, okay? And, uh, Thank you. We welcome you to the Monday edition of the Gospel Voice. It is our joy and our privilege to be back one more time with the Daily uh, Gospel Voice radio broadcast. And we do appreciate all that have joined us today. And thank you for especially you uh, regular listeners who tune in uh, to the broadcast on a regular basis. We're excited about what the Lord is doing in these days. And these are exciting days to be a Christian, to be saved. And to be serving God, and they're unusual days, they're difficult days, we're handicapped in a lot of ways, but I'm glad that the Lord is not, and we're seeing him do some wonderful things in these days. So I praise God for that. We want to have prayer and get started. Uh, Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for your many, many blessings and all you do for us and what you've done for us in the past, what you're going to do. Lord, our future is very bright and wonderful as a child of God. Bless our time in your word today. Open the scriptures unto us. May we behold those truths we need to see. We'll thank you and we'll praise you for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're at lesson 106 on dealing with the rapture, but this is actually, actually we're past the rapture right now and we're in the day of the Lord. And uh, once we get through uh, our study on Egypt, we start on the Ezekiel 38 and 39, we'll go ahead and uh, I begin to call that that period of time called the day of the Lord. Now, and remember that we said that Israel, and we taught we taught on uh, Lebanon in Bible prophecy, and then last week we talked about Syria in Bible prophecy. Now, the Bible said in Isaiah 17 verse 1, "The burden to Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be." a ruinous heap. This has never happened in the long 5,000 year history of Damascus, uh, the oldest city, continuous city in the world. It has been controlled by many different people down through history. And of course, when you go, you look at the ancient days and uh, you remember the Babylonian Empire uh, uh, that uh, the Assyrians uh, controlled Syria for a while, and then the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the arms of silver, the Medes and the Persians, they controlled Damascus. The Greeks, the belly of brass, controlled Damascus. The Romans, the legs of iron, feet of iron and clay, controlled Damascus. And then as the Roman Empire broke up, and uh, you had uh, the history there of the Middle East, uh, you had uh, that country, you know, was its own country. And until the Islamic movement in the 600s that took over the uh, area of Syria and Damascus, of course, that was thoroughly evangelized in ancient days. <clears throat> and then in the 1517, we have the uh, complete takeover of the Ottoman Turk Empire of what is today Syria, lived in Syria. Jordan, Iraq, Iran, Saudi Arabia, all of those areas over there, Lebanon, uh, were controlled by and in the Ottoman Turk Empire. Now, World War I uh, uh, defeated the Ottoman Turks, 
and drove them back. And under the French mandate, Assyria was formed as well as Lebanon. And, of course, it has been, uh, we've been watching the history there uh, for some time in Syria with the very bloody uh, revolution they've had. But notice that the Bible says that a time is coming that Damascus will be a ruinous heap. It's a huge city, and it's a very constructed in a very uh, con with much concrete and steel. So it is going to take something to fulfill Isaiah 17 and verse 1 will take a very catastrophic event. And uh, some think some type of a nuclear warhead probably that, that Israel probably has some that would uh, cause damage without, uh, without uh, uh, you know, killing everybody in Israel. So here's what I believe the Bible teaches us. Now, I wanted today also to look at and uh, go over to Psalm 83. Psalm 83 is important because it also plays into, remember that we've been teaching that the rapture is going to take place. And the rapture will be accommodated by whirlwinds and fire. And then the third thing is sword. And uh, the Bible said the dead will be from one end of the earth to the other. They'll not be able to bury the dead. So when we have that, and we find then that war breaks out in the Middle East. And uh, Israel will go to war with and defeat Lebanon and defeat also uh, Syria, as we've just studied there in Isaiah 17, and then uh, the country of the uh, country of Jordan. Now, Psalm 83 is dealing a lot with what's going to happen in Jordan. Also, Lebanon uh, is involved here, and Syria, and maybe Saudi Arabia is found within these prophecies. And let's look at it today uh, on the Gospel Voice, Psalm 83. Keep not silent, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a torment, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Now, the thing that I'm wondering about is I'm wondering what is going to motivate this unified attack of the Islamic countries around Israel after the rapture, but something is going to happen that is going to uh, bring about a mobilization of Syria and Lebanon. Of course, you got Hezbollah in, um, in Lebanon now. Syria has been training, and Russia has been equipping Syria for some time, uh, and of course, Israel, and we'll look at uh, Egypt. Egypt's very important to understand what is going to happen, and that will be the doorway to the Ezekiel 38 and 39 international invasion into Israel. So these countries have said, and notice this is very important to understand, Psalm 83, verse 4. They, uh, they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel might be no more in remembrance. This is a very, very clear prophecy, and it demands that uh, the current situation be what it is, that there be a nation in Israel, and uh, that there be those countries around Israel who are anti-Israeli. And, of course, I know that uh, as I'm making these broadcasts, President Trump um, was able to get a peace agreement with the United Arab Emirates, our country, and we, we praise the Lord for that. But something is going to happen, and it's really going to be an all-out attack on Israel after the rapture of the church. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Now notice the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarenes. Now, this is uh, these are the people that live in Jordan. So this is the Jordanians here, Gebel and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. 
Now, Tyre is uh, in what is today Lebanon. And uh, when you look at the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre, this, is, uh, this includes also some of the sections of the Palestinian uh, land over there. Asher also is joined with them. They have hopped the children of Lot, Sheila. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the Brook Crescent, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their princes, Zeba and Zamina, who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountain on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Now this is really an amazing prophecy here in Psalm 83. Because here we find in all of this that we have, a, we have this people. And I'll be able to show you in the scriptures that this is what will happen. The uh, Arabic people, the Semitic peoples over there uh, uh, around Israel, they are going to come to the Lord and they're going to seek God. And by the middle of the tribulation period, they are actually going to help and assist the saved Jews fleeing down to Edom, down to Petra, to be hid by God for the last half of the tribulation. Uh, they're in uh, that place where God has prepared. So that's an amazing thing. He said, Let, uh, fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Now I want you to make a little note if you, uh, in your mind or somewhere, is that when we read this, that this prophecy, I believe, is saying that God will destroy and God will delusion the Islamic religion. I believe Islam is going to be uh, become a shameful thing. Now keep in mind that uh, the Islamic world, they are looking for the 12th Inman. They believe that the world has to have a crisis to a degree to bring this 12th Inman back, who is going to defeat and destroy and, and conquer the world so that Islam will reign and control the entire world in a kind of, they have kind of a almost a millennial age uh, type uh, a mentality that they are looking for. When I was coming back from Guyana back some time back and talking to a man and we had long discussions over, over two hours we discussed the Bible and uh, he was very knowledgeable and he had a lot of scriptures he thought, you know, was going to cause me a problem and so forth and so on. And I thought that was interesting that that man had that many scriptures and that many uh, Bible verses marked. And, uh, and he, he thought they were verses that uh, undid the Bible like all unbelievers do. But one of the things he told me that was very fascinating is that, he, that they believe in, their, in his group of, of, of Islam that Jesus is going to come in a second coming and that he is going to go, this is what they teach, that he will go to the Christians, this is what he told me, and tell the Christians that he is not God and that uh, they are not to accept him as God, that he is like Muhammad, just a great man and a prophet. And that would be the second coming of Christ. And so he is supposed to come back and turn the Christian world to Islam. Now that is what they believe in that. And, uh, but notice the Bible says their faces will be filled with shame. Well listen, our time has got away from us for today. And we're going to pick up here on tomorrow. And I appreciate you being with us today. And we want to continue looking here and talking about what God is going to do in the Middle East after the rapture takes place. Are you rapture ready? That's the important question today. We love you. Bye now. This has been the Gospel Voice Broadcast with Brother Dewey.
Tony W. Williams, pastor of Bell Metals Baptist <laughs> Church, 619 Wagner Road in Bristol. Folks, I'm going to clear it off and work on Tuesday. Stay with us. We'll be back just in a few minutes. Good to see everybody with us on Facebook today. God bless each one of you.